everyone, I'm Oz and welcome back to another one of my Kitbash Carnage tutorials. Today we're going to be taking some Orc Death Dread sprues and some Plasticard plus some extra bits and we're going to make a super cool Orc Death Dread. Okay, so we're going to start off nice and simple uh, with something you're already familiar with which is just building the torso uh, from the uh, standard Death Dread kit. And so we're just going to start off by clipping all the parts off the sprue. Uh, this is relatively simple. If you're familiar with building death dreads, you already know all this process. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's a couple of little bits we do, which is just clip off some of the excess spikes. Um, and that's about it, really. It's just a bit of filing up, cleaning up, and getting ready to start working on the legs. Okay, so uh, the torso is complete, all done. We can put that to one side for a second. Uh, next thing we're going to do. Uh, before we move on to the legs is just uh, cover the old uh, slot in the front of the torso. Uh, there's a really nice piece to use to cover this which isn't intended to do that but it's perfect for it which is like a lower armor plate off of the Death Dread kit. It has sort of a, a protruding recess that doesn't allow it to go flat. You can see here that it, it's actually got this ledge that doesn't allow it to go on. Uh, so all we need to do is cut that off just so it fits uh, smoothly on the front and the best way to do it is just to cut in at a 45 degree angle all the way around and then that allows you to just quite easily cut off the excess plastic and then give it a little file down and it should fit nicely on the front. You may have to take off a couple of the rivets maybe on the front of the body and then it should fit nice and snug. Okay, so now we're going to start on the legs. We'll start with uh, pulling all the standard leg parts off of the sprues. Uh, this is just the major leg parts. They're really nice because they come in one piece, which is quite handy. Not going to be handy later because we're going to need to cut them in half. Also off of this sprue, we're going to clip off. There's some little armor plates, like little detailing, uh, orc glyph parts. So they're going to be really good in a minute just to kind of hide some of the uh, extensions and plaster card we're going to be putting on these legs just to extend them a little bit. We're just going to clip the feet off for now. We're going to put them to one side because we don't need the feet just yet. Okay, so we've got all our pieces we're going to need for the legs. We're just going to clean all the spikes off these legs quickly because I don't like them and I find that I end up stabbing myself on them more than anything. But uh, yeah, so we'll just clean those off, clean up the legs, clean some mold lines up. Um, I do like to extend the legs because I find them a little bit too short on the stock model. Okay, to extend the legs, we're going to just use some plastic card uh, square rod. So it's just um, just standard, I think it's about four millimeter plastic card. And what we're going to do is just use that to extend the lower half of the leg. Uh, what we need to do is cut the top half of the leg off. Now this is, isn't great because there isn't a very good angle there, but we can generally go off of the armor plates to try and cut the top half of the leg off. We we'll just flick through this because I'll be hacking away at it for ages and we get both of them cut off. I was also getting stabbed in the finger at this point by the spike on the side of the foot. Okay, so now that we've uh, cut the legs off at the point, we're gonna just uh, clean them up quickly, get rid of all the little bits and bobs that are left over. Uh, then we're gonna glue the side panels onto the legs, which is just sort of like your exterior detailing on the legs that come in just the standard orc kit. Now that's done, we are uh, move on to making the little extension bars for the legs, so just using this little four by four square box section. I'm just using my clippers here to uh, mark out the length of the piece I need. And this is just gonna act as a, a bit of an extension. So I'm gonna cut it off. There we go, we've got one little square. And that should just fit nicely on top of the leg. Okay, so we're gonna uh, attach these little blocks that we made, little extension plimps. And they just sit nicely on top and they should line up with the back of the leg and the front of the leg, which is good. So now that we've stuck a couple of little of uh, the detail plates into hide, we're just going to use these. Um, I'm not even sure what they're actually used for in the Death Dread kicks. I don't think I've ever used them for that purpose. It might be something to do with guns or something, but yeah, I use them as knee pads. So they sit on just to make the legs look a little bit longer, just give that illusion that the legs are longer than they actually are. But yeah, they can, they just go on the end right width, but it makes a cool looking sort of knee pad buffer kind of thing if it wanted to kneel down at all. 
Uh, we'll carry on just detailing up these legs, so hiding the front plates, and then we can just go ahead and re-gluing the top half of the leg back on again. So yeah, just a little fiddling around with some of these details to get them uh, hide that front plate. You can also um, use some of the little orc glyph details to hide the inside of the leg as well. They're quite good for putting in there. There's plenty of those normally lying around. Like I said, we can get rid of the feet for now because we don't want to actually glue those on until we're ready to glue onto the base. Um, so they can just go to one side for now. I just wanted to cut them off, otherwise I'll be looking at sprues again for ages. Okay, so that's the legs done. We're going to put those to one side with the torso for now and uh, we'll revisit those in a minute. Okay, so next we're going to work on the head. Uh, this is uh, this is the only bit that really relies on other parts of different sprues for now, but we're going to go with um, the standard visor from the Death Dread kit, which uh, is interchangeable with the other heads. You can use the little googly eye one if you want to, but yeah, we're just going to use the standard visored head. I prefer it. Next, we're going to need the actual barrel of the head, and for this, I went with the battle wagon sprue and there's a little cupola turret for a big shooter so I went with that you can also use some other parts like uh, Valkyrie missile pods tend to work quite well I've used those on other builds but even then you could use a little bit of pipe but I was just trying to stick with bits you might already have so battle wagon bits are normally a plenty so yeah we just went with that we also used the top hatch from the battle wagon kit I think it's also the part that goes with that turret um, and that's what we're going to use from that for now so that's all the bits we need next we're going to go on to just making that polar turret a little bit taller well, it, it doesn't actually make it any taller but we're going to make it look taller by just cutting off all of the flat edges so just by going around the outside and uh, gradually cutting away all the excess plastic once we've done that we are work on the visor so the back of the visor has that slot on it that we had from earlier uh, in the torso so we need to get rid of that we're just going to cut that out the same way we did with the piece earlier just by doing lots of little cuts with the clippers to try and uh, get through it easily and then you can just scrape the rest out with the knife so next we need the circumference of that turret isn't actually the right circumference for the face shield so we're just going to just bend that a little bit and all I did was just doing that by bending it in my fingers. It took a little while but you can generally bend those quite easily. They just take a little bit of uh, fiddling about to get them to work properly. They're never truly fit but you can normally fill it with a little bit of plaster card and sheets. Once that's uh, done and ready to rumble we can work on finishing off this section for the head. All I'm going to use here is, uh, I think, I believe this was three millimeter or two and a half millimeter thick plaster card. Uh, it's just a good base, looks like some good thick steel that they've used to plate this, so I just go with that generally. Nice and easy, just cut a big square out, enough that you need, and then we can just glue that directly onto the bottom. I'm just going to key the surface a little bit, um, and then we can just glue that straight onto that plate, and then we can cut that plate down a little bit later on. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we're just going to uh, cut uh, one of the Death Dread shoulder pads off. We're, we'll come back to that later, but we're just going to cut it off. It's going to be used as the drop down visor for the uh, head later on. But we'll just do that while it's drying. So it's just cleaning it up, cutting all the excess bits off. Now that the bottom of the head is dry on that plaster card, we're just going to trim off all of the excess plaster card. I'm not being too careful with that. I, it, it's just going to be rubbish welded metal, so it can be pretty rough needs a little file nice and smooth and then we're going to go on to fitting dry fitting the visor and the top hatch there is a little nub on the bottom of the top hatch which which would just need to be cut off just so it fits flush on top and then it would just be fitting the head visor on so, so because i was lazy and i didn't bend the visor enough but it is quite tricky to bend that visor i'm just filling the edges with a bit of plaster card that's fine later on I can just put some bolt heads on some rivets whatever just to try and hide it um, but it all just adds little bits of detail to the head and I'll probably have to do it on the other side as well that's the head pretty much done well the basis of it's done you can add as much detail now as you want little bits of rivets extra plates panels uh, we'll probably come back to a bit later on so next we're going to continue work on the little dry drop down visor obviously this piece is completely optional you don't have to use this if you don't want to well I suppose all of it's optional um, 
So yeah, we're just gonna drill out the two little eye holes just because I think it's funny and it's got two little eye holes, even though it's got an obvious visor underneath, but you know, it talks, they, they, they just think it works. Okay, so the rest of the bits for the visor, I think they're for the jaw that goes on the front of the dread. It's, uh, yeah, these little parts here, so they're gonna come off. Okay, so to try and get this visor to fit nicely, I've got this little bit of plastic card U-shaped channel. So it should fit nicely because it's sort of the same width as the plastic. So it fits nicely over it, gives it a larger surface area for the visor to attach to. So it just, it just helps it out a little bit. And also it gives them a little bit more length because they're not quite long enough to reach back past the visor. So that just sorts that problem out. Okay, so we're gonna glue just plenty of this excess channel on. We there's no, you might as well just put excess on and we can cut it down again later. Uh, we'll just leave that to dry for a minute. While that's drying, we might as well go ahead and start work on the engines. Now, I'm not a massive fan of the engines sticking miles off the back because we need to put extra stuff on the back, like the flame tanks and stuff. So if I put the engines on in the conventional way, yeah, everything would just stick too far out the back. So we're just gonna use half of each engine block. So they like handed left and right. And that just allows us to just bring the back in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna need to change the direction at which these pipes angle. So there's a tiny little locating lug that we need to cut out on each of these. It's like a weird little triangular piece that needs to be cut off. So we're gonna cut those off of the end of the pipes and then they just need to be glued directly onto the back of the engines. It's a really fiddly little bit to do, but it uh, just allows you to then change the angle of the pipes. You could uh, glue these and then pin them maybe, but uh, I just chose to uh, glue them straight on afterwards. And also gluing everything to my hands as well. We just cut the uh, locating uh, lugs off the back of the engine block because they're gonna sit flush against the back of the torso. So now the engines can go straight onto the back of the torso now. You can see that the pipes just stick out either side of the like grills, grilled vent piece on the top. And they just fit in there nicely then. All you end up with really is a, uh, a bit of a gap down the middle between the two engines, but that's easy enough to sort out later on. So just to fill that gap between the engines, all I'm using is a little bit of plastic card rod. Obviously you could use anything for that really, just whatever you've got lying around, even just a little bit of sprue or something will probably quite happily fill that gap. But it's, it's just filler really. It's just what I had handy at the time. Right, we're just gonna go back to this visor quickly while the other bits are drying. So all we're gonna do is uh, cut down the bits of plastic card that we glued on just for strengthening. And then we have those uh, side parts from the armored jaw that goes on the front of the dread. So that can now glue on successfully and then we just need to test it just make sure it's going to fit okay with the head uh, which it seems to be and then we will glue the other one on and then try and line it up i was having some difficulties here getting this to glue this is why i added this extra plastic card on because it does make it a lot easier but uh, we can see that's going to fit so all we're going to do is put it to one side for now and let that dry Okay, so we're at the point now where we can uh, think about gluing the legs on. Uh, I mainly do this now just because, because it makes the model a little bit easier to handle and then later on it helps me work out uh, final posing of the model because you don't really want to then try and move it all around once the arms are on and things like that. So think about where I want the legs first and then uh, come back to that later. So we're just going to start off by gluing the one leg on in a position that I'm happy with that's gonna be nice and stable base for gluing. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the others. And then it's all entirely up to you how you want the pose, but this is why we leave the feet off because if you want it in a more of a running pose, it allows you to then glue the feet on in a slightly different angle later on. Um, but that's it, it should be ready to go on the base and then we can uh, come back to it later on. Okay, so now we're going to make a start on the arms. So first we're going to take the larger arm pieces from the Death Dread. These are like the primary choppy arms, not the gun arms. They're fine as they are, but they tend to snag up on the torso if you leave all the parts on. They look very kind of flappy as they uh, stick out from the sides. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to trim some of the parts off. Uh, this is mainly like the hoses, some of the hydraulics. Um, we'll keep these hose lines for now because they're coming useful later on the flamer. But what, mainly what we're going to do is cut out anything that's going to kind of snag up against the body because the arms will have to get quite close to the body to give you a, a decent profile and shape. So we're just going to continue. We're just going to carry on cutting off a lot of these bits. Okay, now this might seem crazy, but we're going to cut off all of the forearm of the dread because it kind of it's not the right angle for what you need it to do so we're just going to cut it off completely so as you can see now the arms have a little bit more freedom of movement and where they can go and we're just going to figure out which arm we're going to use on which side which is going to be the left which is going to be the right uh, I used I used the flat angle from the part we cut off to decide this because um, I knew roughly where the rest of the arm wanted to go so I decided that the the one that I was using on the right was actually better on the left because it gave me a flat angle to work with um, but that's pretty much that first little bit of the arms sorted okay so before we do any more with the arms I think we need to figure out what we're doing about the weapon because that will govern exactly where it's where it's going to hang on the model what I'm going to do with the rest of the arms so we're going to go straight onto that for the flamer, I had some Invicta Warsuit uh, flamers hanging around. Uh, so you might have a friend who has these as well, where they've used the auto cannon, so they should have these bits left over. Uh, or you could probably grab them anywhere, really. But Or you could use a different flamer. But this one was a great size and really good for what I needed it to do. So I just went straight on with uh, using these parts. But like I said, you could use something else. So now we're back to our trusty Death Dread sprue. Um, we're going to find some bits to sort of orcify this flamer a bit. Uh, the actual Death Dreads flamer is quite nice because it's got lots of little pipey bits and all sorts. But also the big shooter looks like a nice barrel extension. Also to make this, flame, uh, this flamer look a little bit more orky and beefier, we've gone with uh, one of the exhaust pipes from the Death Dread kit. Uh, you get one of these on the sprue, hence why I didn't use it on the back, because it's probably the, the nicest looking one. Looks more like a flamer muzzle. We just uh, drill out the ends of it just to uh, make it look more like a flamer and get rid of the spikes off the top before I stab myself with them again. Next we're going to clip off all the exhaust pipe parts, so to make it more of a flat edge for me to work from, and then we can uh, deal with extending it a little bit longer later on. So because we're not using this orc flamer as an actual flamer, we're just going to uh, cut off the uh, igniting tip so we can use that on the actual flamer nozzle that we're going to use. So we can pop that to one side because that would be come in handy a little bit later on. Okay, so now we've got all our um, bits ready for the, for the flamer. Uh, we need some kind of uh, shield to protect the, uh, the bearer from the flames. Uh, on the first one of these I built, I actually used the uh, shield that came with the Invicta wall suit, but I didn't seem to have that part anymore, so I didn't have one spare. So for this one, uh, I just robbed this shield from a mech gun kit. So like I said, if you're an alt player, you should have maybe one of these lying around. If not, you can rob something else, anything really a do, bit of marine, tank part, anything to do. But I just really like the look of this one with the little mesh grill on. Um, I thought it looked really nice it's just the and it had the right shape as well it's that kind of curved lower half to it we'll just push on and just remove some of these details because we need some nice flat surface for the flamer barrels to fit to okay so we're work on extending these uh, the flamer barrels so what we do is we use this uh, big shoot from the kit it looks really really good one for this job because it's got all like the ported vents on it which is really great for that so we're just we only want the barrel from it so we're just gonna cut all the rest of this big shooter away uh, so we've just got the little barrel and uh, that would be ready to go. Next we go back to the uh, Invicta Warsuits Flamer. So we need to just start cleaning some bits off of that. We cut these uh, two loops off for the old Warsuit arms because we don't need those anymore. And we cut the tag off at the front which with the Flamer Shield would normally attach to. And that gives us a nice smooth point for the our barrel extension to fit onto. So there's our one bit of uh, barrel extension done. So next we need to work on the flamer one. But first we're gonna have a look at how this uh, is gonna interact now with this gun shield. The mesh at the top of this gun shield was kind of getting in the way a bit. So I took it off camera and just cut away a large section of it to make it 
give me a larger flat area to work with. Um, so it wasn't really lining up. So we just cut that away and now it seems to fit nicely. Next, we're gonna look at making a second barrel extension to go underneath. Uh, for this, I think it was like a six mil plasticard tube I was using, it might have been five mil. But again, you could use anything. You could use another bit of a big shooter. You could use anything you want for this really. Um, I'm sure you've got plenty of bits lying around, but it's just, I had it handy on the desk, so I went with using that. So we've cut that down to the same length as the other barrel. So we can now glue that to that barrel and the base of the gun. So now we've got a nice, good, strong connection point. Was strong. So we're just gonna add uh, another little bit of plastic card here just to uh, give it a little bit more detail and fill out the barrel. Make sure it all still fits nicely and it doesn't overhang the front and back. So now that I know these barrels fit nicely, we're just gonna go ahead and glue them to the shield, just give us another connection point, and then we can work from that going forwards. So now we're gonna move on to uh, gluing the two flamer barrels together. So this was the exhaust and the Invicta Warsuit flamer barrel. Uh, just give it a little sand down clean up because there's lots of spikes on there and bits of random stuff that's just gonna get in the way. So we make it nice and smooth, decent contact point. Luckily here we have some plastic card tubing that fits just right, just inside of the Invicta Warsuit. Uh, flamer nozzle so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut some random lengths off which you can come back to later and uh, get them glued in there and then we can cut them down but that's uh, just a good start just so we can uh, start trying to line it all up so now what we're going to do is just some various little bits of uh, plastic card we're just going to um, just cut it out glue it on just so we can make the all the flamer nozzle pieces all the same length uh, this is just not much to say about this really is just kind of all cutting a lot of bits of plastic to the same length, gluing them to the nozzle, and then just making sure that we can uh, sort of get it to line up against the body of the gun. We're just going to put some little extra little bits of tube on just for a bit of detailing uh, and also just to make it look less uniform. Hindsight here, this tube was probably a little bit too big for the uh, the, the weapon that I was using, but it, it, it'll do. It's orcs, they don't care, so I don't care. So somewhere along the line here, I cut one of these a uh, little bit too short. So the gun barrel was actually on a bit of a uh, an angle. Um, you know, I probably should have done a better job of this, but it was. Uh, I just had to use the knife just to push the sleeves down that I made, just to try and help it line up. But you can see it well, didn't really want to glue very easily. Um, but like one thing you could have done here is you could have actually uh, just cut a large hole in the middle of this shield and actually threaded the pipe straight through. That might have been uh, a, probably a better thing to do because then you could have done one continuous run of the tube. Um, but like I said, I'm just using plastic card tube here. You could have used anything, any gun barrel would, would have sufficed to do this. Okay, so next we're gonna uh, look at adding some more detail to the face of the weapon. So we're gonna use just the Death Dread Flamer that we cut off the sprue earlier. Uh, this is really good for just making it look all key from the front so we're just going to have to try and find a way just to get this to line up and attach to the front of this flamer uh, generally it's just clipping the bits off that are clashing putting it up against the rest of the gun again seeing what's clashing next next cutting that off and then also trying to get the barrels to line up at the end but it wasn't too difficult just cutting bits off and then working your way down until it's in the right position and then plenty of glue just to get it to stay on there all we're going to do now is just cover up the back of the flamer tank on this uh, orc flamer. Uh, this plastic card is sort of like a one millimeter, it might be half a millimeter thick strip that you can get from Plastistruct, which is really useful. You can get it in two or three mil wide, but it's great for just filling little gaps and really versatile. Uh, definitely recommend it if you're going to pick up some plastic card products. But yeah, just these little strips. And as you can see, we've glued it on with plenty of overhang so we can uh, cut it off again later on, cut off the bits we don't need. So just giving it a once over, just making sure it's going to look right. If I glue it where it look, where it sits, I think it's going to be fine. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, try and attach that on. So that's the bulk of the flamer done. Now we can really start to look at how it's going to sit on the model, what sort of angles, what, what sort of pose we're going to have. So looking at it from lots of different angles, as you can see, I'm still tinkering with this gun barrel that looks like it's bent, that's because it is bent. Um, but you know, orcs don't need straight guns to shoot, especially flamethrowers. So we're just gonna tidy up that little gap in the top where I cut off the old joints from the Invicta, uh, from their arms. 
Okay, so this next bit is probably uh, a little bit obscure. Probably most people don't know this part, but this is actually off of the, uh, I believe it's the Cru Land Raider Crusader uh, with the flamethrowers on the side. Um, so this is the fuel tanks that sit just in off the sponsons. I picked these just because they were just looked really good, like almost like old school Space Marine flamer style uh, double drums underneath. You could just use anything you want, either like a um, just a piece of terrain flamer barrel, anything like that. Something a, a bit smaller probably. Uh, anything else I'd probably recommend would be the, uh, I think it's the Imperial Guard upgrade sprue for uh, Lehman Russ or I think it's just a tank upgrade sprue. There's a, a fuel drum on the back of there, which is probably a good size for this as well. So you could use that one as well. Uh, we're just going to pop this together and then we can get an eye for how it's going to sit on the model. I'm quite happy with the way that's looking. We're just going to cut off the excess of the tubes on there because it had this large flat panel on it. So we need to find some way of sort of linking these onto the rest of the flamer. And the best way I could think of at the time was actually just using some of the tube that I had. Um, this, this would be like a 4.5 mil tube, 5 mil, something along those kind of lines. But again, you don't have to use plastic card rod, you could use whatever you wanted for this. You could even just use a little roll of green stuff or something to try and get that to link up. Yeah, so these two little pieces of plastic, we're just going to use those on the top of these tanks to make it look like it uh, actually attaches. Uh, for some reason it wanted to stick to my finger more than the actual thing that had glue on it for some reason. But, uh, that's fine. So next we're going to add some uh, extensions to these just to get them up into the middle of the gun so you can't see them. Um, I've made them as long longer than they actually need to be, but that you know, just makes it easier to cut them down later on. Always makes stuff longer than it needs to be. Gives you an idea of how high, far down the gun you want it. it just gives you plenty more options. So now we've just added an extra bit of detail in, which is just another tube running from the main body of the gun to the barrel. Now I'm gonna cut these uh, tubes off at like a 45 degree angle and I can see roughly where it's gonna sit inside the gun. And again, I've probably used a slightly larger tube there or slightly smaller outer tube just to make those fit a little bit tighter. And we're just gonna try and glue this in underneath, prop it up with my file for a bit, maybe. No, yeah, maybe, yeah, no. It's like a gumball machine of kind of trying to balance things. There we go, I got it. Nobody move. All right, so while we're waiting for that gun to dry, we're gonna work on the hands. Now, this is probably the fiddliest bit of the entire build. Um, we've got a small kind of two millimeter wide hexagon rod. Uh, so you've got some nice flat edges to work with. And then we've got uh, some square and rectangular rod. So one of them is two mil by about one and a half millimeters and the other one's two millimeters by two millimeters. So we're gonna use these as the finger sections. Um, we've got to cut lots of little 45 degree angle pieces onto these. So the smaller one now we're just cutting up. So we're cutting it into, as you can see, it's got two angles and then a flat edge. So that's gonna be the middle of the fingers Obviously there's other hands out there you could use. Um, if you've just got Invicta Wall Suits, you could use their hands. Uh, or I guess Nemesis Dread Knight hands would probably work quite well. Uh, they just don't look very orky. Um, so next we're gonna go on to the slightly larger of the square sections that we've got. So I believe this is actually just a square section. Um, I probably could have done this a little bit tidier, um, but I was kind of time constrained with this one, so I'm just using my snipper, but it always causes this kind of oval cut, which isn't great. Okay, so now we've cut out the, this is the larger parts of the, each of the fingers, so these are slightly bigger than the others. Um, you've only got to make one of these hands because I like to make the second hand more of a claw. Uh, but this is the hand that's just going to be holding the gun. So now we can attach the smaller pieces to the larger pieces using the 45 degree angles we've cut. So now you get the larger part. So the only bit you're missing now is the tips of the fingers. I think there was more glue on my actual fingers at this point than there was on the fingers that should have glue on. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, that's just the uh, three of the fingers done. 
Okay, so next we're gonna cut out the uh, largest part of the fingers and connect them to a small piece of that hexagon rod. Like before, we're just gonna use excess and have it hang over the edges, uh, just because that allows us to cut it off again later on. And we know it's not gonna be wonky or, you know, we're gonna be missing bits. So this is why that hexagon tube is really nice because it actually gives you a little bit of a flat surface to connect it to rather than using like round uh, rod. And we're just gonna glue those on and then leave them to one side for a second. Again, they are gluing to my fingers rather than the plastic. So the pistol grip we cut out earlier, I chose not to use uh, in favor of using just some actual plastic hard rod. Uh, just because it because it made it a little bit easier to handle because uh, then I could have it on like a, a long piece and then wield it about as it were So I decided to just glue the fingers straight onto this rod and then that allowed me to kind of fiddle about with it a little bit more And also later on I can cut it off to the side length So now the first stage of the fingers is uh, glue into that rod we go back to the uh, main part of the fingers and just cut off this excess hexagon tube that we had because uh, we don't need that anymore so we might as well cut that off. So now that they're all trimmed down we're um, attached them to the uh, rod that we're using just to kind of hold it all together for now. And it is really finicky, uh, a bit fiddly to get these to go on but if you can just kind of get them in place, get the glue holding them and then kind of straighten them out afterwards uh, it's a lot easier. Okay, so like I said earlier, I like the one of the hands to be more of a claw rather than a hand. So we're gonna go and use these, uh, these are like the feet part. So the, these come, uh, they can like glue to the sides of the legs to give the, the feet more of like a taloned look. Like, so it's got two hooked feet, like a velociraptor, either side of its main foot. So but I'm just gonna use them to actually make a, uh, a hand and it's relatively easy to do so you can just cut some of the points off otherwise they're very difficult to uh, get them to hold anything. So these uh, claws as I like to call them have a quite a nice little spacer inbuilt that allows them to attach to the feet but it actually forms quite a nice little spacer between the each of the fingers so we're just going to glue them all in the same orientation because they're going to be holding on to uh, another grip, a pistol grip as it were so they can just glue like that for now. We uh, missed one of the fingers there when we were cutting it off. So now we're just gonna use some more of that same size rod again to uh, make it look like it's uh, holding a grip. It's not very uh, big, but we can uh, make it look bigger with just some bits on the end later on. I should have let that dry a little bit longer before I started trying to do this, but you know. So we've uh, had a little bit of a tidy up and we've gone ahead and done a little bit of detailing on the flamer so I've glued on the uh, burner nozzle and so that just glued straight to the bottom of the exhaust and I just added some little bits of pipe and stuff which was just lying around in the bits box I think a couple of the bits were like shields off of the um, shields off of the uh, met gun sprues um, so that was about that and there's some little pipes and stuff but that's the the flamer done happy with it for now next what I've got is this is just some tiny little really thin plaster card which is really good for like making little straps and stuff um, it, it's like fraction of a millimeter and I'm just using it just to detail the fingers a little bit so we can just stick it on just so they're just not square blocks these bits are completely optional but I just add them on just for just to give it a little bit more detail on the fingers it's not as noticeable it's just very thin little bit of plaster card just to make those parts of the fingers look a little bit bigger uh, than the others. So we're gonna go with this arm to be his right arm. I chose that uh, because it's actually flat. Uh, that angle has already got a flat piece on it, as you can see. So that would line up perfectly with the gun. Uh, so we're gonna go with that one for now because that will line up. Uh, and we'll sort the other one out later. The problem with these arms, I know this seem odd, but we're gonna cut the ball joint off because it actually clashes with the center of the torso. Uh, by cutting it off and slightly repositioning it, it actually gives you a little bit of uh, allowances for moving it around. It allows you to make it closer to the body. Um, just by cutting it off, cleaning it up, 
So now what this allows us to do is just uh, reposition the ball joint on the arm to be closer to the torso so it gives it a bit of a step out. Um, you don't have to do this but I find that it actually allows you to position the arms a little bit better. Um, gives you a little bit of more flexibility in where they go. It moves that ball joint about, uh, it's, it's about two millimeters towards the one side. Uh, so now it allows that arm just to get a little bit closer to the body. Okay, so we're going to cut off the uh, excess of the hydraulic rams on this arm. Um, I, I like to remove them just because they end up looking like they've got a bit, bit of a chicken wing situation going on. Um, but the one part that we've just removed is the bottom end of the hydraulics and we're going to keep that probably for later on just to use for the front flamer grip as it's a good shape. We're just going to cover up some of this uh, area and make it a little bit wider just with a little bit of uh, this is that u-channel plaster card again uh, it just makes this bit look a little bit more interesting yeah so we're just going to have a look at this part see if it's going to work as a pistol grip so it looks like it's going to fit quite nicely as a uh, pistol grip so we're going to go on uh, clean it up uh, it needs a small amount of extending to get it to go past the gun shield that we put on. So I'm just going to use some of that small U-channel again just to uh, add on there. And then it should fit uh, nicely on the side. So this uh, pistol grip still needed a little bit more of extension. So I just used a small square of plastic card just to kind of uh, boost it up a little bit. Okay, so going back to our Death Dread sprues, we're going to clip out the uh, the other parts of the lower arms on the Death Dread kit. Uh, we're going to use these completely the wrong way around that they're supposed to be used, but that's what we do. So as you can see, we're going to use these arm pieces actually back to front uh, because they've got a nice flat surface that are now connect to the rest of the arm. And it almost makes it like they have a bit of a, a like a wrist guard, almost a wrist shield because there's a raised point on the arm, which uh, works quite well. So now we're gonna go back to our hand again and uh, make the uh, the primary joint for all the fingers to attach to the uh, the hand. This is just using some more plastic card rod again. Obviously there's many things that you could use for this, but I just use that. So now we're gonna work on the, like, the palm of the hand. So what we're gonna use one of these dead, uh, death dread claws um, and just cut off everything apart from the the ball joint and keep the uh, the rest of it So what we're gonna do is just gonna clean off some of these the excess parts that are just gonna get in the way and Actually, what I used here was a, a half round file just to file into um, That piece of it just so it connects nicely to the uh, round tube on the fingers So we just file it out and it just gives us a slightly better connection point so now we're just working out where what orientation this needs to be in to line up with the fingers correctly. I probably should have left this to glue for a little bit longer before I started trying to add bits to it. As you can see, it wasn't uh, wasn't very stable now due to that, but we can put it down, put it out of the way and come back to it in a minute. So next we need a, uh, a thumb. So I, was, I just went with the Invicta War Suit uh, fingers just because I had some excess lying around and I didn't want to make any more fingers. So I just went for them. I can't remember whether you actually get these fingers left over from an Invicta War Suit kit. I'm not 100% sure, but I did because I didn't build an Invicta War Suit. I'm just going to cut one of the joints off because we don't need all the joints. And then work out a position for this thumb to go in. So as that finger was drying, I decided to go back and uh, work on this front hand grip. Uh, just clipping off the excess plastic and then trying to make the alignment, make sure they're all lined up correctly. So now that the hand's dried, we're just going to come back to it and add a little bit more detail. This was just a small piece of rod again, just to kind of uh, beef up the where the thumb joint uh, meet the rest of the body. So we just found a uh, small bit of plastic off of one of the kits and uh, just to make a top for the pistol grip holder, just to kind of make it look a little bit more substantial than it actually is. Uh, just cutting that off and then we can just glue that on the top. We can add stuff to it later if we need to. While we're here we might as well uh, go ahead and uh, cut this off our extended rod that we were using. Now we can look at uh, how this is going to actually line up on the main body of the gun. Be very gentle here filing this down so I don't want to break all these fingers off that I've just done. Okay so I think I'm happy with how this is going to uh, line up. 
because the hands are going to be straight regardless so they might as well uh, go on the go on the gun now and then I can force the arms to uh, sort of line up and fit later on so we're going to go back to the claw hand for a bit and uh, work on that while the other stuff is drying uh, so what we're going to do is clip off that excess plastic that we had and we're going to make some make a stopper for that as well so just something to glue onto the end of that bar so now we're going to work on the other hand so the palm and we're going to use another one of the deft dread hands which is the saw blades um, we're going to start by uh, cutting it off so we just end up with the sort of engine square block part and then the uh, little ball joint for the wrists to go on to uh, which clean that up and uh, make it nice and flat so luckily these claws have a nice big flat patch on them so we can just glue that straight on to uh, uh, that flat panel of the main grip while that's gluing we just have a quick look at uh, how this is going to align on the main body of the dread with the flamer so we're going to go back and use some tubing again just just big enough to uh, fit uh, the ball joint into and we're going to uh, it should just fit just inside the sleeve of this sort of uh, lower arm section so now we've got that tube to the right length we're just going to glue it into the like the forearm as it were and just make sure it's all uh, lined up so as we've got some gaps in here we're just going to fill those up with more plastic card uh, like I said before you could use anything really for this I'm sure you could find something lying around in a bits box that you could use but it's just what I had handy fitted so I was using it and this was just some of that plastic card that I used for the fingers so I was going to look at just bulking the wrists out a little bit uh, the forearms okay so I'm going to want to go ahead and um, start to glue this arm together and get the positioning right and the best way I found to do that was uh, use some uh, blue tack sticky tack and uh, position the flamer in the exact position that I want and then I can go ahead and check all of the arm positioning and arm joints and it, it hold in location then so I can go ahead and check how it's going to look, what angles, where the head's going to go um, and then I can just leave that blue tack there until the other arm is done and supporting the gun so now that I'm, I think I'm happy with the positioning of that, the flamer and the, and the arms, I can go ahead and uh, start gluing them together. So now we've got the uh, gun's positioning done, it's time to do the head. So there's no point leaving this. We know where we want it to be, so we might as well glue it on. All I did was just put a little spacer block just on top of the uh, hatch there, just to act as a spacer, just to lift the head off a tiny little bit. Um, you can see quickly that I've added some little details to the back of the head there just to uh, make the hinges look like they actually attach to the rest of the head. Uh, so now that's on, we might as well have a go at gluing these exhausts on. This is always tricky because there's not they're top heavy and there's not a lot of connection point. Backtracking there, switching sides for some reason. I think I swapped them around because then they weren't identical to the ever Flamer Death Dread I had built before. So I kind of uh, switched them out for that reason. Okay, so now the, the uh, gun arm and the gun and the exhaust are all dried, we can look at finishing off this visor. Obviously we can just cut off the excess off of the tops of these pieces. And he should be able to just go straight onto the head. So there is some little pins just on the inside of these uh, visor hinges, which were there from when it was supposed to connect to the front of the death tread and just one of them just needed cutting off because it was snagging against the side of the visor. But there you go, fits on lovely now, no problems. Okay, so we're back and it's time to finish the other arm, the left arm. Uh, we've got ourselves another Victor Warsuit thumb or finger, but we're gonna make it into a thumb, Tom thumb. So for this one, it was relatively straightforward to get it to connect. All I did was I cut almost like a 45 degree angle out of the main body of the hand, uh, which would act as like a nice little connection point for that thumb. And it would allow me to almost rotate it a little bit as well. Just gonna make sure that it doesn't uh, uh, hit against the armor plate for the wrist. And we're gonna have a look at doing the tubing now, ready for the wrist joint. So it's just rinse and repeat really with this uh, arm joint, exactly the same as last time using the same side tubing and just add in some little spaces and some details. So now we know where the hand is roughly gonna be. We can cut off the excess of that hand grip I made earlier. So we know um, where that 
hand's gonna sit exactly because we just leave it as long longer than it is and then we can cut it down later. It's always easier to do it that way. All right, so as you can see now that the, the hand fits fine but the elbow joint doesn't actually line up square because it's got that different angle on it from where the hydraulics sit. So we're gonna have to do something about that and just cut it down and, and square it off. What we're also gonna do is uh, cut the the top ball joint off again and do the same as what we did last time on the other side, just to make it so the arm can fit a little bit closer. So that's the left arm done. So just put it together exactly the same way as we did before. So we're pretty much almost there now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some uh, shoulder pads just to kind of like beef the arms back out a little bit because we removed a lot of the hydraulics and other bits and bobs. So we're just gonna pick a couple of these bits to make into shoulder pads. And now all we're gonna do is uh, play around with these shoulder pads and get them into a position where we like the positioning on them. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to working on his uh, flamethrower tanks, like the backpack. Uh, for this we've got, uh, it's just one of the tanks from the terrain kit. I think it's the Ministorum containers and stuff. So we've got a barrel from that and also a barrel from the Imperial Guard tank upgrade sprue. That's the smaller one of the two. It's the one I previously mentioned saying it might work as a tank to go underneath the actual flamethrower itself. There's a lot of just stuff in the way at the back here on the model and it just means that tank just sticks out way too far on the back. I wanted to get it in nice and tight. So uh, we decided to just try and cut those bits off and just try and get it as close as possible. Okay, so we glued the uh, second tank onto the back, which was the Imperial Guard upgrade sprue one. All right, next what we've got is, this is a green stuff roller from uh, Green Stuff World. All it is is just two plates that are tracks really that allow you to uh, roll out these uh, little tentacle makers. Okay, so now that our tentacles have dried, that's a weird phrase, um, I let them dry on some plastic just to stop them ad ad sticking to stuff. I was about to say ad adhering, ad ad adhering to stuff, sticking to stuff. Uh, so now we're going to try and uh, figure out where they uh, go. I didn't want that exhaust on there anyway, so that can come off. So next we're going to find a place where we're going to connect these to the gun. And this tube is just kind of the, the right size to take the uh, pipes that we've made. So we cut out these two small bits of plastic just to kind of uh, glue underneath and that gives us our angle for the, the hoses to come out at the right kind of uh, angle to just wrap round. So if they came straight out of the bottom they would be hitting the ground and yeah they would just all be kind of all kinds of wrong. So we uh, put them in at a slight angle. So now we're going to make some connectors for these hoses to join them all up. And that was just using some of the tube that we used earlier and all we're going to do is cut off the excess of the hoses and just uh, super glue them all together to make some uh, longer pieces. So this is just the Death Dread rocket launcher that I'm just cannibalizing along with a big shooter mag to make some kind of pump or outlet for the fuel to go down the lines. So the rest of the hoses was relatively straightforward, just linking them up with using the connectors, uh, the missile launcher part that I used to make the fuel line and what we also did is uh, with all my excess hose that we used I made like a, a spare hose reel for the other side uh, just for something to do which took some bending because it was quite uh, green stuff had gone quite hard at this point so it's quite difficult to bend it and get it to stay in shape but we carried on anyway Okay, and then next what we did is we just moved on to finishing up with adding some chains, clips, uh, straps like metal banding, just to hold all the brackets and things together on the back. Uh, and that is about it really, and we're, we're done. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the build as much as I did. I really enjoyed making these burner dreads. They were great fun. Um, can't wait to get them on the tabletop. Um, if you really, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'm really happy that you managed to stick through to the end. Uh, not many people do, to be fair. They get bored. They're just not dedicated enough. 
But yeah, if you've got any other ideas, if you've seen anything on my Instagram that you want me to build or do a video tutorial on or just a bit more information, just drop it in the comments below and I will try and come back to you or someone else on the channel will come back to you. But see you next time.